This is Ron Kidger with Book Nook, brought to you by the Quincy Public Library. For all the activities at the library, make sure you check out their website, quincylibrary.org. And we have Andrew Kravak with us. He is the author of the book called The Bear. He is the author chosen for the Big Read on September 19th at the Quincy Public Library. He'll be at Washington Park speaking to kids. And um, So first of all, um, what kind of message do you want to get across to the kids? I mean, it, I just think it's fun talking to kids because their imagination is so, it flourishes so much, you know, that it, it's untainted, so to speak. So what would your, what type of topics would you talk about with these guys? Well, so, I mean, I, I think it needs to be said right up front is that I, it's not really a, it's not really a novel for kids. Right. Um, I think they they have to be pretty um, uh, precocious in many ways. They're just good readers, which isn't to say that there are uh, kids who are great readers out there. That's for sure. But, if kids are going to read the novel, I, I would want them to re, not exactly reevaluate, that's not a fair word for kids, but re, rethink the, their relationship to nature, which is to say, take a second look and ask yourself, um, what is, what is this world around me that a lot of times I might, you might just take for granted when you step out the door, or, you know, adults are certainly taking for granted with the way we treat it. So, um, you know, Right from the right from the start, how can you how can you change the way you look at the world around you, the environment, nature, those things that are not um, that we as humans really don't have much control over, but seem to be affecting nevertheless. Yeah, and that leads into my next question because the theme of the big read this year is where we live. So, uh, how does your book fit in that category? I, it's a, it's a fic- it's a novel, it's fiction. Right. So where we live, I mean, it, it is, I, I think, again, this, uh, this relationship to humans and nature. When I, um, when I first set out, I, I really wanted to try to write a novel in which nature was the protagonist, like an actual protagonist, that, that word, for, uh, which means first actor from the ancient Greek. And because um, I, I, I felt as though this kind of top down humans, you know, way at the top of the ladder and then nature kind of and animals sort of get second shrift because there is a sort of hierarchy. And I wondered about changing the vertical to a horizontal and asking ourselves, what what does that do to the relationship between humans and nature? And so um, uh, so the world around us, obviously, is is something that we do uh, bump up against every day, whether you live in the city, whether you live in rural America. You cannot not be engaged with your environment. And so the question is, how are you engaged? Why are you engaged in a particular way? Um, if it's a, a good, healthy relationship, oh, that, that's, that's great. If it's not, if, it, if you just take it for granted, in other words, if, if nature is just a sort of passive setting you travel through, um, why is that? Uh, is there a way in which you could possibly be more active? So uh, did you spend a lot of time in nature as a kid, or what drove you into that mindset? I, I did. I, I grew up in uh, rural northeastern Pennsylvania in the 70s, and I joke about the fact that, um, I mean, my parents are both white-collar workers li- uh, living in this place where my, my mom grew up, uh, her, the house her father built as a Slovak-American immigrant. Uh, built we, uh, we built our house next to it, like a few um, um, Several hundred yards down the street was a dead end road uh, in the Pocono Northeast, and I joke about the fact that we are just like one one notch above feral, which <laughs> doesn't sound as crazy as it as I make it sound. The fact is, we had a great relationship with the outdoors. We were just outside. My brother and I. There were seven of us, but it was this big, big stretch of years between my oldest brother and my younger brother. Um, we were just outside all the time. Mm-hmm. Winter, summer, spring, fall. And um, so that already was a relationship that I loved, um, hiking, camping. So when I when I um, bought this place in New Hampshire where I set the fictional novel there in the, what I call the Old Eastern Range, um, I was actually thinking about the ways in which those early days of growing up in Pennsylvania had returned to me in New Hampshire by the, the smells of the dirt the sight of the animals, the, um, the, the feel of the Northeast in the summertime. And, um, and now as an older man, I, I come at it with, with a creativity that I look, I'm looking back on, 
rather than as a young man wondering if I would ever become the writer I wanted to be, looking forward. So it's kind of a a, a full circle for me, the environment. And um, and so I thought, okay, as a writer, let me go back and think about the most radical way I can conceive of of humans being in a um, deep, intimate relationship with nature. What's interesting, though, is you're a father, and there is a father in this book, but um, there's a child in the book, and it's a little girl, correct? That's correct. So a lot of people, I think most authors write from experience, and there's a lot of this book, I think it's from the, the little girl's point of view, right? That's correct. So how did you come up with that? I mean, well, is, is this based on... We raised three kids, yep. two boys and a girl. Okay. And so by the time I got around to thinking about this novel, probably around 2017 or so, um, I was watching I was watching my older sons grow up and then my younger daughter grow up. And so it wasn't... It wasn't too hard. I have a really great relationship with my daughter. She's very, very free spirited and loves to be outside and has a lot of energy. And so that that idea of, you know, the father daughter uh, was a, was a pretty simple step for me to make. Okay. It could have been a father and a son, which for the outdoors would have would have been almost well. I don't want to say too obvious, but it's been done. Mm-hmm. So I thought the father daughter would be a. Um, you know, a more interesting perspective about which to write. I think what's interesting, too, is you said you started thinking about this in 2017. I think a lot of people don't realize that it takes this this long, six, seven years, to yeah. put something like this together. Yeah, it really does. And I think that's the um, that's just the fact of literary fiction, really. Everything from the um, revising, just the writing, to the revising, to the getting it. I mean, I, I'll i tell you, Ron, as a writer, that I, I measure every sentence um and sound it out to see if mm-hmm. it, if, it um, if it has the music, you know, as well yeah. as the meaning. Do you ever get to the point where it's like, my gosh, is this ever going to end? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I just told a group of, of graduates at an MFA program in, here in Boston this weekend, uh, I was talking about the work of writing, and one thing I cautioned them was, don't do the math. Don't. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because once you start thinking about pages number of pages, length of a manuscript, you, you'll go crazy. So do, when you write, when you write though, and I think this is the big challenge, do you write so you enjoy the story or are you writing so that you're pretty sure others will enjoy the story because you don't really know if anybody's going to like it until they read it? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the former. You can't know. Um, most authors don't. And I think when something is successful, it's a bit of a surprise. Mm-hmm. I think you have to be, to thine own self be true, right? Is that Shakespeare? I, I um, believe so. Yeah, so <laughs> as a writer, you've just got to believe that, you know, when you put that last period on that last sentence of the manuscript and you think, yeah, this is it, it's, it's, it's all yours. And then when you send it out, if you send it out to editor or whomever, it's no longer yours. So I, I always feel like I have to be as pleased with it happy with it and um you know engaged or, or engaged with it in love with it really mm-hmm. as i can be or else you know just i'm not going to send it out so you, you were chosen for the big read by the quincy library and you're you've been chosen by the national endowment of arts right to be a part of the big read program around the country and that had to be very rewarding when you got that phone call yeah i really was yeah i, I was i mean it's still kind of um, unbelievable in many ways um yeah, so it's there's just really no words for that. Um, just give, can you give us a small capsule, just what the bear is about? Yeah, sure. Um, the bear is a story about the last two people left on Earth, a father and his daughter. They're living in what's essentially the northeast of the United States, what I call the old Eastern Range, and they live a um, they live a very simple but um, intimate life with nature. They um, uh, it's it's really an outward looking novel with respect to nature. They have to they hunt and fish, and their whole their whole purpose is to survive. But they're very happy. He he teaches her how to read and write. The mother died six months after the girl was born, and so that that brings it to the last two. Um, it, then there's it, there's a part of it that's the uh, the girl's coming of age, 
then there's a journey narrative where they they move they have to journey to the coast and without much of a spoiler that's where the girl becomes the last and at that point um a bear enters the scene and what i envisioned with the novel was this this veil lifting between nature and humans and the bear and the girl can can communicate and he essentially becomes her guide as he helps her get back home and uh, the, the idea of that was it is also a story about storytelling. And I, I wondered if there were, it, when, if and when it comes down to the last two humans on Earth, I wonder if nature, I, I believe nature will survive and be just fine. It has such a power to it. But I, I think it would be a, a really wonderful surprise to find out that nature actually cares about us more than we seem to care about nature. So that's, that's the, um, the premise of the bear that nature comes and guides the girl who becomes the woman back home to where she um, where she, she you know came of age as a girl the uh, what one of the reviews you got that I found really interesting and it says and I can't remember who said it but this book follows you like a river under ice and I, I I'm just curious what that meant to you when the person said that about your book. I think um, there's a scene in which um, that involves the river and falling through ice, which oh, is really okay. fun riding. Yeah, um, and it just seems like it's. I, I want it to be a really difficult novel, emotionally, but also a, a beautiful novel. So you know, we always have to follow something. But um, I almost got that the message is it's an underlying message throughout the book that doesn't slap you in the face. But when you're done reading, you sit there and go. Oh, okay. And it's one of those books that makes you think more after you read it than during you read it. Is is that accurate about the bear? Sure, I, I, I'll take that. Yeah. Let, let me say about the idea of the last two. I was initially when I was writing the book, I really did just want to write about a father and his, and his daughter um, living closer to the land. Uh, but the story was it wasn't really. I, I didn't really have a. Um, big conflict, a big struggle, you know, as the Greeks would say, the agon drives every story, every every tragedy they understood. But um, I was out fishing one day on, on our, our lake in New Hampshire, and I thought, wow, this must have been really beautiful for the first the first peoples as the Laurentide ice sheet retreated in the north. You know, it's just, you know, 11,000 years ago, which is nothing. Uh, those indigenous people of the land were living very close to this two-mile-high glacier as it backed away into what is now the Arctic. And then I thought, I wonder what it's going to be like for the last. And I thought, that's it. They are the last two. But then I realized, I went back to, I rode back to my dock and went up to my writing desk and wrote down the first couple pages of the novel. And then I knew if it was going to work, I would have to be strict about everything. If they're the last two, they have to live as the last two. And that put me in a whole new um, environment, if you will, of of living off the land and living close to nature. So, Andrew, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Ron. And this Appreciate is it. And I, thanks for reading. Yeah, and this is Andrew Kovac, author of The Bear. He is the author that's be a part of the Big Read with the Quincy Public Library on September nineteenth.